Today, we are going to compare two popular cameras, the Nikon D5500 and Pentax K3. We are going to take a look at their features, who they are for, how they perform in various use cases, user experiences, and which one is the right one for you. Links to both of the cameras will be listed in the description below. Let's get started. The Nikon D5500 and the Pentax K3 are two digital cameras that were officially introduced respectively in the 6th of January 2015 and the 10th of April 2014. Let's take a look at how their specs compare to each other. We tested both cameras to assess their performance in different scenarios. Let's take a closer look at our ratings for each of them. Here are our ratings for the Nikon D5500. For portrait photography, we will give it a 7 out of 10 rating. For street photography, we will give it a 8 out of 10 rating. For sports photography, we will give it a 9 out of 10 rating. For day-to-day -day photography, we will give it a 8 out of 10 rating. For landscape photography, we will give it a 6 out of 10 rating. Here are our ratings for the Pentax K3. For portrait photography, we will give it a 8 out of 10 rating. For street photography, we will give it a 10 out of 10 rating. For sports photography, we will give it a 10 out of 10 rating. For day-to-day -day photography, we will give it a 8 out of 10 rating. For landscape photography, we will give it a 6 out of 10 rating. Next, we will take a look at some sample photos from the Nikon D5500 and the Pentax K3. Keep in mind that these photos have editing done to them, so the result from your camera might be different. Let's start with the sample photos. Here are some sample photos from the Nikon D5500. And here are some sample photos from the Pentax K3. Next, let's take a look at what other users of these cameras have to say about them. Here's what people have to say about the Nikon D5500. I upgraded from the D5100 to the D5500, and I'm glad I did. The increased sensor resolution and number of focus points are great improvements. The Touch FN feature is my favorite, and there are many little improvements to the viewfinder, rear screen, size, and weight. The auto ISO now takes into account focal length, and the ability to remotely take pictures from a smartphone is a great feature. The video quality is a major step up, although the autofocus motor is still loud in videos. Adobe Lightroom now supports RAW files from the D5500. Overall, I am extremely impressed with this camera and would recommend it to anyone. I love my new camera upgrade from the D5000. The red color is true to what I expected and helps me quickly tell my camera bodies apart. It's smaller and lighter, making it perfect for outdoor photography. The LCD screen is larger and higher quality, and the touch screen is a nice addition. The expanded ISO gives me more flexibility in low lighting. I found the continuous shooting mode a bit challenging in low light, but overall I'm very pleased with this camera and highly recommend it for photographers on a budget. Here's what people have to say about the Pentax K3. I have been using the Pentax K3 and I absolutely love it. The layout, feel, and image quality are fantastic. It is a durable camera, as it survived a fall without a scratch. I highly recommend it to anyone who cares about stills photography. As a user of the Pentax K3, I can confidently say that this camera is worth considering if you are looking for something different from the big two. Nikon and Canon. The feature set is extensive, and the in-body image stabilization and classic Pentax K mount make it easy to use old lenses. The image quality is top-notch, and the camera is customizable. The only downside is the lack of built-in Wi-Fi. But if you shoot in RAW and are okay with a post-processing workflow, it's not a bug issue. Overall, this camera is a leap forward for Pentax. To conclude, here are our overall ratings for both of these cameras. Nikon D5500. We will give it an overall rating of 8 out of 10. Pentax K3. We will give it an overall rating of 9 out of 10. 